Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is regular scheduled meeting of the of the uh, Select Board of Town of Sunderland. Let's call to order at 6.32 on December 12th, 2022. First order of business is approved minutes of December 5th, 2022 as presented. I motion we accept the minutes as presented. Seconded. Okay, I have a motion made and seconded to approve the minutes as presented on uh, December 5th, 2022. Any further discussion? Here, no discussion. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Jeff, 3-0. Next business, we have under new business, discussions of long-term capital needs and funding. Jeffrey? Yes, so we do have a quorum of the Capital Planning Committee here. We have five members, so if you want to call to order. Right, I call the order of this meeting of the Capital Planning Committee. And I'm happy to summarize unless somebody else wants to. Do you want me to do that? I need to do, uh... All right, I'll start and then you correct sure. me and jump in. So, um, We've been looking at, at the capital needs over the next 10 to 15 years and, um, you know, it's, it's up and down. We did a, I met with all the department heads, talked about some of the, the major upcoming uh, capital projects and it's looking like it's going to average out to about $400,000 a year uh, over the next 10 years. Um, we're talking roof on the school at some point in the next 10 years another fire truck um, a loader in highway that's probably a quarter of a million dollars um, a one ton that's probably about the same different ways of funding things we could do lease to own like we did currently but some things we can't like a new roof so the capital planning committee was discussing what kind of options there were um, and, you know, looking at this uh, and looking at the capital stabilization override that was passed in 2014, um, there was discussion about uh, should we be looking at increasing the capital stabilization override and if so, in what amount. Um, and sort of playing with the numbers, the current capital stabilization override, I think, well, you'll see it later on in the agenda, but it's about $125,000 this year. It increases by 2.5%, so not a whole lot. Um, the Capital Planning Committee was talking about $250,000, so that would bring the total annual stabilization amount to about three seventy-five. dollars And then, obviously, we in, in those years where we need more, free cash would still be available for, for some of those projects. So I think that's that's my overview. I don't know if you wanted to add anything. Just a couple quick things. Um, the $400,000 figure is also based on what we are seeing today as what we need for the next chunk of years, not necessarily what's going to actually be needed when we get there. Um, very likely that that number will go up. Um, and it also doesn't take into consideration any kind of um, inflationary increasing cost of any of these products also. So again, when we get to a lot of these products, they're going to be more expensive than they are currently. So we're looking at the $400,000 mark is really the floor of where we would need to be for this. Peter? Yeah, I just, I'd also like to add just in the way of background for what Jeff said that um, normally our committee gets the request from the department about this time of year and we work through the winter and together with your board to figure out what, what we can afford and usually it's we can't afford everything so we can choose and so on. Um, but given that, you know, we, and, and each year it's come up that, gee, we ought to be looking longer term, okay? And so this year we actually got started at the beginning of the fall and said, okay, what's it look like over the next decade or next 15 years? And Jeff did a bunch of work put together, uh, you know, talking to all the departments and the schools and, and figuring out what the needs are, best as we can do. Um, and it seemed that if we were going to do something like adding to our capital override, that that needed to be put on the table early in the process. We couldn't come up with that for the first time in mid-March or something like that to say, you know, hey, what do you think about that? Okay, so 
that where we are now is we've done a bunch of thinking and looking and, and, and analyzing and so on, and we have a sense of what the committee is proposing, but we wanted to bring it to your board um, just to open the conversation, just so that, you know, from your point of view, you're not getting surprised by something later on. Um, I did talk in the last uh, week or so to a former member of this board, Scott Bergeron, or talked and communicated via email, um, about the history of the initial capital override. And I said that, I can't remember, I suggested, I guess I said that our committee thought maybe it was considered to be a first step rather than a long-term solution to our capital problem. And he said, absolutely, it was considered, let's just try this amount. They weren't saying that 100,000 was sufficient for uh, the needs of the town, but it was like, well, let's see if the town will agree to this. And uh, the town did, uh, and it's been a blessing, and the only thing he would say is it's been a blessing, but it's just not really what we need to deal with this problem in, a, in an ongoing way. Um, I, I think it's important to say that the town has really done a good job over the years in terms of taking care of its in infrastructure. Um, we have at this point paid off all the building debt that we have. We only have the, the, the one loan on the fire truck and that's got a couple more years to go and then that would be done. Um, our buildings are pretty good shape, okay? but they're also getting old. The youngest ones are 20 years old now, and they're at the point when you know the building may be okay, but components or parts of it or aspects of it, okay, are starting to start to call for attention and they start to call for serious attention. And so, what we're trying to do is figure out how do we deal with this financially. Okay, as you know, over the next decade or two decades or something like that. And the best way that, the best thing you can do is if you can set up a recurring revenue stream that's specifically dedicated to capital stuff that can't be spent for, oh, we need money for operating costs this year or something like that. It's gotta be spent for capital stuff. Because most institutions, most towns, most cities don't do that. What you see in most institutions, most cities and towns, is taking care of your capital, taking care of your infrastructure is the first thing that gets cut when when funds are short. And by having a dedicated revenue stream just for this, okay, that really is a way to make sure that you take care of yourself. And I think that that's something that is, you know, residents of the town that you know, the same way we try to take care of, of, of where we live, try and take care of our vehicles, so on, the town ought to be the same way. And I would think that, you know, to make this clear to the town what we're doing, the town should be supportive of that. But we don't know, you know, it's your board that decides as to even whether we go down this road, and it's your board that decides if we do, how much we ask for. Okay, but we want to get this out on the table early here in the process so that you know we can give it proper consideration. A couple more things I just wanted to add. Um, one, just a clarification to everyone's on the same page. Uh, we're not, none of the frontier capital requests are part of this. So that's a whole other ball of wax. That'll be another conversation that we have. Uh, I just want to make sure that that's clear that that's not part of the calculation. Um, also, the $400,000, the projects that are in there, um, I looked over the list. It, there's not a lot of not a lot of things we cannot do on that list. This is not like it's a, it's a wish list of people us asking for a whole bunch of superfluous things. It's like, okay, we need heat for the kids. Okay, we need air conditioning for the kids. Okay, we need a roof for the school, that kind of stuff. There's not a lot of really, there's not a lot of things we can get away with not doing on here without it being a real hit to the infrastructure of town. Um, and the way I see it is either we're gonna try to convince the town to do an override this one time or eight of the next 10 years, we're going to be trying to convince the town to do an override for that particular year for whatever reason. Um, I think that's going to be a lot harder. Any questions from uh, either of you about the process or numbers? Well, I, I guess my, <clears throat> I guess my biggest 
question I would have is that you, you have a couple big expenditures that are coming up. The school roof, right? Yeah. Now, so, now, typically that would, I, I would think that you would partner the school roof with some other building projects at that time and, and see, first you'd look for school building assistance money and if there was no if there was no money school building assistance then you would try to partner so you would borrow a set and let's say a million dollars i'm just using hypothetical and then you would take you would you would take and knock off your um items that needed to be worked on at the school and it would be an override debt exclusion but then once it's paid off then it would be taken off the tax rate right so you you look at that you look at that, that that's a big nut the 500,000 for the school roof but it's a one time thing and you'd pay it over 10 years and or so and you would say that versus why if if you're so I guess my first thing is I don't even know if it should be included in this discussion right now. The roof. The roof. Correct. Because it's such a big, it's a big nut. Correct. And, 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 and no matter what we did. So then if you take that out of it and, and take the fire truck out of it because in the way prices on fire trucks are escalating, it's probably going to be $750,000. Right now, right now I've been told that the fire truck that we have right now that we spent at, Five hundred thousand, five hundred nine thousand dollars on. You aren't going to buy that for six hundred and fifty thousand dollars right now. That's what somebody from Deerfield was just telling me the other day. So I have no idea where that price is. So when you, so when we look at capital, what, what are we trying to cap? What, what I guess, what are we trying to capture for reoccurring? capital and I agreed the, the hundred thousand dollars that was just a we could have very easily gone in 2015 we should, could have easily gone to two hundred thousand dollars back then we at that time if you ask me why we did it was to let let our residents of the town understand that we have to invest in our capital and that was our first step in investment in the capital because at that before that we were just living year to year off from one time money's uh, stabilization accounts or free cash or, or whatever, excess, excess levy capacity that we may or may not have had at that time. So we were living dated, we were living year to year for a capital, but we thought it would be very important to plan. So I guess I would, I'd be looking at a more, and, and typical, Typical expenses, let's say up to four hundred thousand, three, even two hundred thousand dollars, that we're going to get on it. So, how much? When you, if you look at the school, how much? How much does it look like they're going to be spending on the school in the next ten years per year? I'm not sure I've got that at hand, but if you take away, I mean, basically the total we came up for was just about four million bucks over ten years. That's where yep. the four hundred thousand a year comes from now. If you take away the school roof, which was uh, the number was just shy of five hundred thousand. If you look if you take away the fire truck, which was six fifty, I think, you've got a little bit over a million there. Just in terms of the numbers we're using now, and as Nathaniel said, you know, who knows what they're gonna be when we finally have to do this stuff. Yeah. But you gotta go with what you got right now. And if you take those couple away instead of four million your profit may be three point uh, I'm sorry, two point eight million. Yeah. Okay. Now two point eight million over ten years is two hundred eighty thousand a year. You know, right now we got a capital over I provide a hundred and a quarter. Okay. And then that says I mean part of this is a discussion about financing options. Okay. And this is I think exactly what you're talking about yeah. here. You got That's options correct. of doing it, you know. Trying to do it all in a capital override so you don't have to come back different times to get you know, additional debt exclusion approvals and so on, and hoping that you can, you know, even out the flow, even out the needs over the years to make it all work, or you pick out a couple of big ones and then you do that 
with the so-called smaller projects, even though like a couple of those smaller projects with a couple of big vehicles needed the highway department, um, you know, and then you, you start, you know, and that's still one of those each over a couple hundred thousand. Yep. Um, oh, they will. Yeah. But what but we're looking at when we're looking at highway, what we're looking at highway now, we're looking at doing a, a lease to own, which has been has it's, been. But it's still, it's still the same yeah. amount. Yep. Okay. It's still thirty five thousand a year. Not going to go down. And so, you know, one way or another, you look at it. If we want to, you know, do a pretty decent job of taking care of things, okay, we're looking take you know take out the couple of big ones like you were you were talking about. You're still not much shy of three hundred three million. Okay, over ten years, three hundred thousand, and we've certainly like you know we've had the policy to do thirty percent of free cash flow. You know, over the capital, but two of the last three years we haven't done that because, you know, we weren't objecting, but just the towns not hadn't been there. Hadn't been there. You can't do it if it's not there. And so if you, you know, and this is that gets to the problem of how do you make it so that good intentions, taking care of your infrastructure, actually get done? Okay. And if it's always going to be, if a chunk of it's going to be contingent on free cash being a nice high number each year, okay, then there are going to be a number of years when it's not going to be, you know, it's not going to be done, and so suddenly you got half of what you thought you had, we're going to have for capital, or even less than that, and, and uh, that's why we want to talk about, you know, other ways of doing it. So, a couple of other things I just want to add to that, and, and one of those is that one of the reasons we went with the $400,000 numbers is we we're aware that there's going to be some bigger projects that we're going to be able to find other route revenues of funding, but the 300000 issue that we're looking at with those out of there, we're assuming over the 10 years is going to cost us $4 million instead of $3 million-ish. And obviously, as you said, we can't, we, we can't guess what's going to happen in the future, but as the last couple of years have shown and as, as the last couple of decades have shown, cost of things are going to go up. And also, if you look at the schedule of what we're talking about over the next 10 years, there's a lot more front-loaded than, than back-loaded, which would make sense because projects have come to light that are more urgent now, but we don't know what we're going to need to do in five years or eight years. Um, so if we were to, to really more average the first couple of years as opposed to the whole thing and look more at like what's a more reasonable, what we're actually going to see year to year versus what we're looking at four, five, six years out, um, it's going to be more than $400,000 even without the big projects. And so what we're, we're really, we're trying to, A, be more reasonable with the, the town, the people of the town, in terms of what our, our needs are going to be, um, so that it, so it's not a constant struggle and surprise to everybody of, oh, wow, we need $600,000 this year, where'd that come from? Um, yes, there's going to be some years on this list where we may end up having to still come back to the town and say, we're still $150,000 short this year, we need a, you know, an override or an exclusion or whatever. But the 125 is just a drop in the bucket for what we're going to be needing to do. Um, so that, that, that's really our, our big concern. Um, we had also discussed, as you were saying, taking out some, some bonds to try to get some of the bigger projects out of the way and that kind of thing. Um, I, just, I worry that some of that ends up pushing some of our financial burden for the next couple of years onto six to ten years out. Um, and we end up having even more trouble when we get to that point and we were, we're paying off of paying leases on stuff that we've already purchased versus being able to have purchased it outright and you know, not have that debt. Crystal, thoughts? So, do we just speak up? Or raise a hand or? Crystal's talking. Yeah, so I, I'm just a little, it, it's a tough thing when, like you said, we do this override potentially for, you know, 400000 but then when you say, and we still may be coming back to the town for more. That's, you know what I mean, to the townspeople, yeah. that kind of, that's. I, I remember when we had the the um, the override a couple of years ago, and a lot of people at town meeting were like, "Well, didn't you just ask for an override a few years ago for a lot of the stuff that's right. on this list?" And we had to be like, "You, you, we did, but here's why." Um, right. But part of it is, if we do have a year where it's six hundred thousand instead of the four hundred that we have, it's going to be a lot easier to get the town to agree to an extra two hundred than it is to the town to agree to an extra five hundred thousand dollars 
Um, and also, our hope is is that there are some of these years we come up short of the four hundred thousand dollars, and there's money left over to roll into the following year. So that we're hoping that if we get, pick an average that's that's you know high enough, that we we end up being able to to save money from one year to the next. And when we do hit those years where we are six hundred thousand for the year, the goal here is to never have to go back to the town for more money. That's the goal. Um, but you know, in, in order to guarantee we don't have to go out of town for money, we would have to go up to like 500000 or something like that. Um, but we, it looks like we have a couple of people who would like to speak on the screen. Lauren? Lauren? Yeah. So I think when we, um, when we passed the, when we put aside the 125 in 2014, I think, you know, there were two goals. One was to actually have the source of funds and one was to start developing a better process for planning for capital expenditures and, and uh, rather than kind of just reacting every time something came up. And I think that that has really started to happen. We're just underfunded. So I think if we want to take a uh, responsible approach toward, the, you know, you look at that list and it's, it's not luck. It's stuff that we're going to have to do one way or another. The question is, do we create a fund that gives us the opportunity to maybe do some long-term planning. So as you know, Daniel was just saying, maybe there's a year where we don't spend everything, but we consciously are setting aside something for money for something that we know is coming up in a few years. Whereas now we're just kind of every year scrambling to see what we can kind of pull the funds together to get done. So I, I think it's, really kind of also just a long-term planning approach and it doesn't preclude obviously um you know looking for grant funding other sources of money and you know if something is truly an unusually large project possibly a different funding source but it still gives you every year you start out where you can come up with a plan thank you jerry yeah um one thing that one thing that I think we don't lose sight of is that it's actually it's an equity issue. And um, when you create a sinking fund, which is what this is proposing, then individuals who are contributing to the sinking fund uh, may not benefit from the actual town expenditure. The difference between funding a capital project with debt at the time the project needs to be undertaken is that those who benefit presumably from it will be actually responsible for funding them. So, you know, um, with a private corporation, it uses that, you know, that makes sense because, you know, the corporation is both the beneficiary of it and, and is responsible for financing the asset. In the case of a public entity like the town of Sutherland, Thunderland, you had people paying into a sinking fund for seven years, but <coughs> that's a loss, a direct loss of revenue then, and yet they may no longer be members of the town at the time the asset is purchased. So there is an equity issue that's a dimension. I think this um, definitely needs to be talked to. Actually, that's, we've, we've talked about that many, many times. I don't think that's a, a foreign concept to us. We talked about the advantage of, you know, someone that, that's paying now versus the benefits going to be gathered for the next 20 years. So I think that's something that we were very aware of, Jerry, to tell you the truth. We, we have been thinking yeah. about that over time because it is. And and just like when you buy a fire truck, do you, buy, do you want to spend that $500,000 just on the people that are using that fire truck that particular year? Or if that fire truck should have a 20-year life expectancy, should it be paying for that fire truck over the 20 years? So, yeah. I agree, but I, but I, but not not to step back for a second. I, I that that's why I would some of the bigger, bug, bigger budgeted projects may not be what I would associate with the capital funding. I I, I think capital funding are things that that um, that we need to like the front steps the front steps of the. Uh, of the town office building, the you know the the railing, the railings on a, a stairwell, or the maintenance of like there's eight thousand dollars maintenance on the uh, the elevator. You, you know those are things that are being used every day. That to me th those are what, 
And again, that hundred thousand dollars. To tell you the truth, it it was. It, and it's very interesting conversation because something you said earlier, Nathaniel, is like, well, you would never have to come back to the town again. Oh boy, I would never say that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I believe that's what the goal was to never have to come back to the town. Because again. because um, things cost things cost more money, and and it and it's not, and that hundred thousand the hundred thousand dollars that we appropriated in 2015. It's worked its way all the way up to 125,000. But the more important thing is, with the capital stabilization, the way it's set up, is you do not have to spend that 125,000 every year, or the 250. So, so if you if you did if if you did go to try to and, and did 250 thousand dollars, whatever the number is, you don't necessarily have to. It's whatever the select board at that time what they would appropriate so it, it's a good conversation to have if i could also just th there's also two ways of looking at some of these capital expenses some of them are yes we're having to buy this asset and the people who are going to use it are going to be people who are using it over the next 10, 10 20 years and you can also look at it as this is an asset that we have that people for the last 20 years have been using and has thus broken down and need to be replaced and so we're replacing an asset that people for the last 20 years have been using as opposed to looking at it as buying an asset that people in the future are going to be using um and i think some of these projects like this the steps for the for the building you wouldn't necessarily say to yourself well if people want to have steps in front of this building you, they need to pay for it in the future we need to provide steps for them regardless today and the reason the steps are broken is not because people in the future are using them, it's because they've been used for however many hundred years that they've been since the last time they were repaired. Um, you know, and, and I think it also comes back to what, what we were talking about before, is that, that we're trying really hard this year to be looking forward to making plans for the future. And you know, part of that is accepting that there might be upfront costs in order to make smart decisions for the town. There might be people in town may end up be paying today for stuff that we're, that we're not going to have for a couple of years or not going to be able to use for a couple of years, but that when you're talking about planning the long-term infrastructure of a town, you don't always have the luxury of only having people paying for what they're using after it's been, after it's been appropriated. Um, and that long-term thinking is really what this is all about, is trying to set up a plan for long-term, you know. And, you know, a lot of times I, I bring stuff back to, to my own personal finances because that's the, the context I have. And if, if I had made a, a food budget five years ago for $50 a month for food, I might have been able to, you know, do that for my food budget. And today's prices, that's not going to cut it. And if, if I'm still only budgeting $50 a month for food, and every single month I'm trying to find an extra $200 somewhere else in my budget to pay for that food because it's not a reasonable amount of money for that, um, that just seems much more hectic and much less planned out than just accepting the fact that maybe I need to increase my budget for food. And I think that's where we are. Is that we're at a place where the town where the $125,000 $125, a year is just not enough for the appetite our town has for pro projects. Um, and so either we need to, you know, increase our, our allotted, our budget for that to be appropriate, or we're going to be constantly looking for money to pay for projects. And, and, and again, with, uh, to, to me, when you look at cap capital is a thing that's always get left off. We, and because capital capital does not have a um, a group like the library trustees coming and and asking for a new position so you, you so library trustees have has a group of people that are just like the fire department or the police department or there there's someone that's but capital is, is basically there's no one champ no one's jump, you know, running down the street with a flag follow me to, to support capital it's, so we'll come in we'll support a fire truck a police cruiser a pump system in the library but the long term when many years ago there was the wastewater treatment plant did not have a maintenance budget so every year and 
there was a conversation one time and it says, well, how do you run a wastewater treatment plant without a maintenance budget? And, well, they said, well, we never had one. It's like, you don't put money aside? And they never did. Why? So, well, we do now. We, 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 have, we have a fund for maintenance and started off at 20,000, probably up to what, 30,000, whatever the number is. Um, I haven't looked at it in a couple months. But so what has that gotten us? Well, if you're on the sewer system, um, we have a, a quality wastewater treatment plant. It's, it's up to date. It's, 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 uh, it's got a safe, safe way to, to chlorinate. You know, you're doing the chlorination. You're looking, your BOD is, be, your, your BOD is being controlled by automation instead of just someone flipping a switch on and off. You, you're, you're monitoring it. Um, so that, that $20,000 that we put aside goes into replacing the gearboxes, replacing the motors, energy efficiency motors, the energy efficient lighting and whatnot. So by, by putting that $20,000, we found ourselves to be in a much better position than not having to put money into it. And when something happens, like an aerator gearbox not too long ago had a problem, well, we had money of we we had money set aside in the maintenance budget so that we could go and we could fix it instead of trying to limp by for a year or two. So there there are advantages to having money, capital money available. The hard part is putting the capital, defining what's a capital asset, defining what a capital is it a maintenance is it a maintenance item is it. That we that's what we have to work on when we present when we present if we decide to present an override is understanding what and how it can be used or what what it's going to be used for um, and I think we got a pretty good plan I think we have a, a have it defined it may need a little tweaking right now but I think it's it's pretty well defined um, but we just have to revisit a lot of that over the next next six months or so Peter. Yeah, my sense is that looking at the projects that were on the list for making up, you know, the four million dollar number over the decade, that they weren't maintenance things. They were clearly capital stuff. It was, it was, that was my sense. I don't know if you disagree, yet, but That was, was my sense also, yeah. It was not, you know, the three thousand here for fixing something or the five thousand there and those things add up to a good size number, but we weren't looking at that level. We were looking at the more serious costs. No, so yeah. said, um, you mentioned something I think that, that is important in this, and that is that we don't have a, a championing committee. We don't have a, a friends of the of the capital committee. We don't that have committee a championing. of the wastewater treatment plant. But but <laughs> if if we. We'll know we, at, we as, a, as a committee have failed if we end up with a, a committee coming in here and holding signs saying replace the roof of the school. Is I think that our committee is a specific committee where you don't want there to be someone coming in championing anything because if they, they are, that means we didn't do our job right, we didn't plan for it right, and whatever that asset is has gotten bad enough that we now have people in here with signs saying please replace this item for us or my house burned down last year because the fire trucks aren't you know, can't get up to my hill or whatever it is you know we I think it's a good sign that we don't have people coming in here asking us or ch championing things and, and complaining about things um, and so that's sort of the whole point of this is we're trying to get ahead of stuff in such a way where we hopefully don't have people coming to us and, and having to petition the board to fix something that should have already been in the plan from years ago. Okay, so what do you, what do you want to do next? Um, my thought was that obviously nothing needs to be decided tonight, but some uh, guidance from your board. We're going to start, I assume, going through this year's projects with department heads and so on come first of the year. Um, and it would be nice by that point to have a sense of, of where, what your board was thinking. Uh, you know, that gives you two, three meetings, you know, if you want to have some more thinking about it and discussion about it, um, so on. But it's, you know, that will help both in terms of, of uh, you know, how we approach this year's projects, but also 
Um, you know, we're trying, we're trying to get this, both discussions and decisions started at an early point so that we can have the proper time to, to make good decisions. And um, like I said, we weren't looking for something tonight, but we wanted to come and, and, and certainly start talking about it. Okay. And if there's if there's some information that the board feels would be helpful, like if you, if you'd like us to prepare, you know, um, a line in here that says without the without the school roof and without the fire truck, what would these numbers be? That kind of thing. If that's if there's something that that, that you what you need in order to help make the decision, um, I'm sure that's something that we can figure out. I I think what 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 I'd recommend is that uh, Jeff's put the uh, the capital plan or the capital you have the 10-year list right mm -hmm. put that together send it to us right and also what I would do is not just not just what it looks like today but again I the, like the bigger the bigger the bigger ticket items the big ticket items like the fire those I, I, I wouldn't so how what we how would we classify them? It's a capital project, but are they so you have a small, medium and large? No, um, we don't have any really we don't have any whatever's beyond large, like a new building, you know, that's not that's not on the table at this point. I don't know what anyone might be thinking about, but you know, at this point we're not talking about like you know, Deerfield or Amherst are talking about various new buildings they need and stuff like that. This is like, you know, the largest ones we're looking at right now were what half a million across uh, the school. Frontier is looking at a roof that's going to be real expensive, but we share that between four towns. And I think they're drawing, trying to stretch the cost over a number of years or something like that. Yeah, they're, they're planning on staging it to have they broke the roof down to think 13 different sections and they're planning on doing like three of them at a time for a chunk of times but um yeah i understand yeah another thing to keep in mind is that this is all also there's nothing about this list that's like adding to the town there's no growth on this list there's no you know the town getting bigger a couple of years or the town the need arises that we, we determine or we or we're talking about the south county senior center possibly moving into town or things like that. Um, there's nothing on here that isn't just making sure the stuff we have right now is able to, you know, weather time. Replacing things that are gonna be, be breaking, upgrading systems that are out of date, um, fixing things. It, it's, there, there's not a lot of new growth on here. And so if a town does decide it wants to do some new growth in the future, does want to add capital projects that are expansion versus just maintenance, um, it's going to be even harder to be able to do that if we don't already have a plan and money set aside to do so. So. Okay. So actually, I think I think you could come to us with a request. Okay. Right. And that. I mean, I would. And that that would be that would that and, and that'd be a place for us. That would be a place for us to start. Okay. With with the cap with the with the capital plan as you see it looking out at 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 10 years okay. and and again the the, the hundred thousand was a, a start it was a, a start we that it was never never it was never intended to be the end all it was it was a, let people know hey actually it was, a, it was a very good step forward by the town because the town recognized that that capital was important so and 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 what we can do if we decide to look at that is we can look at how the capital funding has been used over the last eight years and show how that money where that money has been spent and, and and what it does also what it all what it also does is it also um, takes some of the pressure off from the other expenses in town so, okay. so suppose, I mean we'll and I'm assuming at some point in January we come back with yep. something like that. Yep. That I would sense. I agree with that. Yes. Okay. And, no. and, and you've also I mean Nathaniel's our committee chair, so okay. there's no way you're not gonna be aware of what we're doing, what we're thinking and so on. 
good. It's good. It's good communication. Going yeah, and, Je and Jeff, will, Jeff will throw us out the 10-year uh, plan. Yeah. So this really is like your 10-year plan, though. This thing here. Right? Yeah. That, that's that's the that, that's where the numbers that we're talking about today come from. Yeah. Um, one thing that I would love to have information on, and I don't want to make your job insanely hard, but by asking you to do this, Jeff, but I'd love to see um, any information we have on past capital projects, what they were originally quoted at when we when we asked when they got put on the capital list, and what they actually ended up costing us when we finished. Um, I would just be curious of what the the average increase from quote to finished product is. Um, so that could be helpful guidance for us also. Okay, good. Thank, Thank you, Peter. Thanks for taking the time to. Oh, it's a good start. Good stuff that now's the time to tired about this stuff. Yeah. All right, Jeff. Next up is our alcohol common Vic and Class Two license renewals. Yes. Uh, yes. Thank you. Uh, I will hear a motion to adjourn the capital planning part of this meeting. So moved. We have a motion made and moved to adjourn. Lord we have a vote. Lord seconding. Lord seconding. Okay. Sorry. Second. Thank you. Um, all those in favor of adjourning the capital planning meeting. All right, it looks like we have 4 0. Thank you. Um, yeah, so next up we have the license renewals, uh, alcohol licenses, common VIC licenses, and class two licenses. Um, for alcohol licenses, we have Billy's Beverage, Blue Heron, Bridgeside Grill, Bub's Barbecue, uh, Goten Steakhouse, Golf Mart, The O's, Spirit Shop, Sunderland Corner Store. Uh, for Class 2, um, All States and JR Service. And for Common Vicks with no alcohol, um, the Banshee. Korean Deli. Um, hopefully she'll be here next week to introduce herself and her new business. Um, is not open yet, but hopefully in January. Dunkin' Donuts, Frontier, Mike's Maze, Millstone, Simorowski Farm Stand, Subway, Sugarloaf Frosty, Sunderland Market, and Wild Roots Cafe and Market. Um, the fire chief and building commissioner were out and they had a couple recommendations um, regarding three of the properties. Um, the building commissioner's uh, recommendation um, was to put a condition on the licenses for uh, Bub's Barbecue, the O's, and Blue Heron that all outstanding issues identified in the 304 inspection are rectified by, oh, I wrote in the memo January 1st, but it's actually January 31st. Um, so by the end, basically give them uh, six weeks to, to rectify the issues. The fire chief um, recommended that there be a condition on Bub's that proof that electrical work has been scheduled to be has been scheduled within let me say it this way within 30 to 60 days the electrical work needs to be scheduled um, not completed for the O's um, the fire chief would like to not issue the license until there is an occupancy determination from a licensed design professional um, and proof that the egress areas are okay. Um, so those were the, the three um, establishments that, that uh, there were recommendations from the, the fire chief and the building commission. Okay, so, so the other ones you're saying that all the taxes and all the other things have been occurred, right? Yep. Th that went through? Yep. Okay. And any outstate, outstanding payments for fees for inspections or whatever, the license wouldn't be released until those have been paid. All right, just so, so, 
So just our audience will can review once a year, usually at the first of the year, most of the businesses in town work by under licenses that are granted by the uh, the select board. Before the select board will issue a license, the businesses are inspected by have a number of different inspections. Board of Health, if they're a restaurant or stuff, electrical, fire, building inspector. So all of these all of these inspections have to be done. In addition, they also go through a process with the town and the town makes sure that all the fees and there's no outstanding taxes are owed on the on the business or the property as well. Cindy? Hi. I uh, forgot to include the um, entertainment licenses for the Blue Heron, Bridgeside, the O's, and Wild Roots on that list. We can get them next those week. We can get them next week, Cindy. Okay. We'll get them next week, okay? That's fine. Good. Um, so, so they're, 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 I mean, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a month, months, plural, process to go through. So, I just want to thank all the, uh, the inspectors and Cindy and the boards that have all of the uh, responsibilities to go through. And you heard Jeff, there's a couple licenses that are contingent upon certain things being done. And again, that that's very common. That it's not a it's not the first time it's ever happened. It happens on a very on a, on a regular occurrence. Um, but it's good. It means that the jobs are getting done, and 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 we're getting just like a, a class two um, license for auto sales. One of the thing is that the the business has to be a person of good character. So if, if you, we haven't had in our town, but there are some towns that they have a very interesting discussions about people's character. So I think we do a good job on that. Okay, so uh, I'd entertain a motion to accept the recommendations of licenses as presented by the town administrator. A motion, we accept the licenses as outlined by the town administrator. Seconded. A motion made. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Jeff, three zero. All right, next on the thing is the vote on the two and a half increase of the capital stabilization override. Yes, so, um, we talked about capital stabilization. When it was created, uh, the select board has the opportunity of increasing the amount up to two and a half percent every year. So uh, typically in December, we uh, town administrator presents it to the select board. Um, the amount um, for 2023, if the full two and a half percent is added would be a hundred and twenty four thousand eight hundred and eighty six dollars okay any discussion hearing no discussion I'll entertain a motion Go ahead. that we increase the uh, stabilization by two and a half percent to two all right our motion that we Motion that we increase the stabilization from just over 124,000 to by two and a half percent. I think that is the 124 is the increased amount. Oh, that's okay. Mm -hmm. That we increase it to 124,000 plus 124,886. Eight, eight, yeah. Seconded. So, so basically. This this 
the uh, override on the stabilization or the, uh, the capital stabilization allows it to increase every year by two and a half percent by a vote of the board. It doesn't have to happen. I mean, the board decided that there was no, no capital projects that they needed the additional funding for, we, we could not, we don't have to vote it. So um, right now, as we are just talking, our, we could use all the money we have for capital. So, so we have a motion made and seconded to increase the capital stabilization by 2.5% to final of 124.886. For FY23, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Jeff three zero. The uh, contract for public safety exhaust. Yes. So um, we did a procurement um, under a state contract, um, and well, we sorry, I should say that uh, we worked with the FERCOG to do that. Um, we requested three bids from three public safety exhaust system vendors. Uh, we received two responses. Um, the lowest response was from Air Cleaning Specialists of New England uh, for $51,143. Um, they were the ones who showed up to the pre-bid meeting at the fire station. They had a lot of good questions. Um, so I, you know, they passed all the background checks. They're on the state contract. So I, I don't have any concerns with awarding them the contract. Though I will say probably now that I'm thinking about this, um, procedurally the select board may want to skip down to the ARPA request for this and fund the project before awarding the contract. Um, I don't know that it really matters, but it, I, thought, I don't know if it makes sense to award that, it. If you, I thought we did that last week. Um, we didn't know what the figures were. I thought were. we had we had a number. We, we had a higher number. I thought we said up to. I don't think we actually voted. I think it was a... Uh, I, thought, I thought I remember Crystal saying up to. Okay. All right, so... Skip over to the ARPA request for public sites. Cindy? I think it's her hand's just yes. still up. Your, is your hand yeah. still up? Oh, sorry, I didn't take it down. Okay. So sorry. That's a problem. All right, go ahead to ARPA request for public. Yep, so uh, request to spend $51,143 of ARPA funds to install um, uh, exhaust removal system in the public safety complex, in the fire. Can, can I just say that we uh, appropriate 55,000 in case there's any change orders? So up to 55 then? Okay. Yeah. Our motion we appropriate up to 55,000 of ARPA funds for public safety complex air exhaust What's it called? Removal system. Air exhaust removal system. There you go. Exhaust removal system. Seconded. Don't ask me why it wasn't done 20 years ago. But. Yeah. Huh. All right. We have a motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Diesel fumes are a carcinogen, so we should have been done 20 years ago. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Three zero. Now we go back to awarding the contract. Yes. And you know, Tom, only one of the people on this board has been around from for on the board for the majority of that last twenty years. I'm just oh, saying. I, I just re I remember very specifically. Well, how come we aren't putting it? So <laughs> oh, we don't need one. Okay. Really? Somebody's father was telling me why they don't need it. I don't know. The door. You open up the doors. Just what's wrong? We just open up the doors. Must be a new breed of firefighter. Exactly. Old okay. timers, that's how you did things, right? All right. Go back to the... Uh, Open the door. Let it up. Do we have a motion to award the contract? A motion we award the contract to... Let me get to the top Air of Cleaning this. Specialists of New England. Air Cleaning Specialists of New England. 
Seconded. A motion made and seconded to award to air cleaning specials of New England per their bid of $51,143. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Three zero. Okay, who wants to do uh, a Jeff's negotiation for his town administrator contract? Nobody else is interested. I don't care. I can do it. I make a motion, Crystal. Very promptly. Up. Seconded. All right. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Looking before she Jeff changes over her there, mind. God. Oh no. Before she no, changes no. her mind. Aye. 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 Three zero. Uh, select board updates. I got nothing. Personnel committee meeting this week, so maybe next week I'll have something. You guys just heard what I've been up to. So, what's that? You guys heard what I've been up. I've been working on. I've been working on the capital stuff. So, other than that, I'm good. Uh, select board updates for me is the. Uh, I'd like to uh, thank. Uh, uh, the Whiteley Grange for putting on the wonderful uh, uh, holiday get together last Saturday over at the Whiteley Town Hall. It was very, very well attended. It had some very, very interesting uh, uh, prizes and guests, and they had singing and they had a wonderful time. So, and it was for the, so that was very good. Um, also, uh, there will be for seniors that need a, uh, a holiday meal on Christmas Day, contact the senior center. They'll, we'll be, they'll be putting together a meal. Um, so if you'd like a meal, if you contact the senior center and get on their list. And Jeff, town administrator updates. Um, I, I don't think so. I think I think it's been a pretty quiet week. So okay. So without hearing anything, anything else for the good for the good of the uh, for the good of the board, town. I did actually remember yeah. one thing we forgot to mention earlier um, sure. about the, the capital planning thing. One of the other thoughts that we had had that we thought we'd bring up with the board is the possibility of um, when FR Cog came in here talk to us about the projects that we were going to be doing. Um, we didn't mention any of the projects that are on the list of capital projects already. We only mentioned stuff that we yeah. had been talking about. Um, we think it would make sense to draw up a list of projects to send to her from our capital list. So she was mentioning that there, are, let's say, two other towns in the area are already looking into roofs. Um, there might be a way to bundle those together into one, one you know, request or one um, proposal that would get money more readily. So we think it would make sense to send off a, a additional list of, of capital stuff to them. Worst case, doesn't do anything, but it might turn out that, oh yeah, we're already planning on doing that for Waitley and Orange. We'll be happy to, to include Sunderland on that grant proposal. You know, Nathaniel, I've, I always wondered, and, and I, I'm, there's 27 communities in Franklin County, and how many how many communities do you think buy a police cruiser every year? Half of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there are probably like 10 or 15 communities buy. Yet, yeah, why do we? You, you know, you would think if you're buying 10 or 15, you'd get better pricing than if you buy one. Yep. Right. But we 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 and and and, and I'll and I, I'm 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 picking on the fire department right now just because. They're, whenever you look at a fire truck, they're a big ticket number, right? But wouldn't wouldn't you think there there be one or two or three towns within a two or three year period that are looking to be you? Wouldn't you get a better price if you're buying three fire trucks instead of one fire truck? You would think. You would think. And and but every fire truck right now is a is a is a. Um, unique device and I don't know why that's so I, I don't know why there's so much difference between fighting a fire from Sunderland to Whiteley mm -hmm. I would think an engine truck is an engine truck and a ladder truck is a ladder truck or a tanker truck is a tanker truck but I'd be wrong 
um, I guess. But I and and again, I I would I would think, and we've talked about that, and I I guess we need to we need to look at that once again because you would think you would save money doing that, wouldn't you? You think so? You wouldn't think it'd be more expensive. No, I mean, and and to take that to its next step, I mean, it also seems like something that if the state of Massachusetts had a collective bargaining for fire trucks or police cruisers or whatever, and each town in the, in the state were to present to the the state, this is what I'm going to need in the next five years, and every year the state went and bought 600 cruisers or you know a thousand fire trucks or whatever it was, I, I think that there, there would definitely be a way to bring that cost down and and not just the cost of the actual items but just the overall administrative cost of going through all that processes rather than having all the towns in, in the state doing that we could be doing that all at once so obviously that's not within our purview but maybe food for thought for our our representatives and and senators and how, how, how about buying police cruisers how many think how many crews do you think the state police buy every year oh yeah when you take the state police and and all the other you know you you would you would think you could do you procurement it would be easier but yeah and and again our town has always been our town fortunately has always we're not we haven't been very parochial about you know having to buy town of some own specified cruiser or whatever but there are towns that are like that so yeah. Okay. I agree with you, though. Good point, Nathaniel. That's all I got. Good point. Anything else, Crystal? Hmm. You all set? Motion? A motion we adjourn. Seconded. A motion made and second to ad adjourn our lovely hearing, our meeting this evening. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 So our December 12th meeting has now come to a conclusion. Please declare us out at uh, 734.